In this video, I'm going to walk through how to set up the software for class on a Windows computer. So uh, we're going to go through five steps and you should do them in this order. First, I'm just going to remove any existing versions of Java that I have on my computer. Then I'm going to install Graphviz. Then I'm going to install the code for class. Then I'm going to install Java. And finally, Eclipse and we'll open it up. Okay, so the first step is to remove any existing version of Java. And you can do that on Windows by going to um, Apps and Features in Settings and looking for any version of Java, Amazon Coretto, or OpenJDK that might be there. Um, I have already done this, so there's no existing versions of Java on the machine. So uh, we're good. The reason to do this is just to avoid confusion. Um, if, if it turns out you already have the, the correct version of Java, you, you can just leave it. But um, often having multiple versions of Java can cause confusion in the machine. So it's just better to have one. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is install Graphiz. Um, Graphiz is some visualization software, and we'll be using it in class to see um, graphs and things like that. So I've already downloaded this, so I'm going to fire up the installer. And um, the one that I'm downloaded here is the MSI. So this is a Microsoft installer. Um, and it's going to walk me through whatever the steps are. Um, I think you can take the defaults. Um, it doesn't really matter. All right, so once Graphis is installed, um, you're done. And you can move on to the next step, um, which is to, to uh, install the code from class. I have uh, gone ahead and downloaded this code, so you can just download it here. It's a zip file, um, which you'll, you'll get. And um, it should download to your, um, excuse me, download to your downloads folder. Um, and you can simply open this up. Um, what you want to do is extract this to a space that you like. Um, so you just hit um, the extract all. And you can download this to um, whatever you like. Uh, I'm going to put it in my documents, say. So I'll extract that. This takes a while, so I'll skip the video for this. So once the download has finished, you should have a folder called uh, Eclipse Workspace in whatever place you chose to unzip it. So again, I unzipped it into Documents. And note that I threw away the container suggested by Windows, which was called DS1. Um, but there you are. So you may have it. At, you can move it wherever you like. It, it's not important. Uh, but someplace you're going to keep your classwork. So this is where you'll be doing assignments and, and things like that. OK, so once you have the um, code from class, then we're going to go ahead and install Java. Um, so if you click here, um, you can get it either from Amazon or from openjdk.org. I'm going to go ahead and download Amazon here. This is Amazon Coretto. These are both um, versions of Java for long-term support. This is what you're looking for. Um, every few years, Java has a long-term support release. Take the most recent long-term support release. In our case, this is Java uh, 11, which is here listed as uh, Amazon Coretto 11. So this is an open version of Java 11 that will be maintained for at least three years. That's the long-term support. So just uh, click there to download this and I think it takes you to, let's see, where does this take us? To a downloads page. OK. Um, and so you're going to want to find the download for Windows. Um, and again, I'm going to download an MSI. That's a Microsoft installer um, to install. So I've got that Microsoft installer here. And let's. Um, Ah, I need to go to downloads. 
there is the installer for Amazon Coretta. Um, let's see what it wants me to do. We have a setup wizard. I, I think we can simply take the defaults. So um, whatever they are, we'll take those. And again, this may take a moment. Not too bad. So that's um, an install of Java. So now we have um, Java and we have the code from class and we have uh, graphics. So our final step will be to uh, get Eclipse. And uh, again, you can find the link in the notes. Um, so you'll click here to download um, a installer. Um, and so um, it'll ask you there. I've already downloaded this, so let's um, find it. There's my Eclipse installer, so I'll run this. Eclipse may be a little bit slow starting up, but once it, it finally gets going, it should give you this screen. Um, and what I want to do is uh, install the Eclipse IDE. That's an integrated development environment for uh, Java developers. So we'll select this option. And um, what it's going to ask you is which Java virtual machine to use. Um, it should be selecting the Java virtual machine that you just installed. So make sure it says JDK uh, 11 or whatever version you installed. It should be that one. <clears throat> and um, it's also going to pick a folder. And you, you can put this wherever you like. Um, so by default, it looks like it's putting it in my home folder in an Eclipse directory. So it doesn't install it in program files. Um, if you want to, you can do that. Again, you can put this wherever you want. Uh, but I'll just take the defaults here and install. Uh, accept the license. And we just wait for it to install. Once Eclipse is finished, um, it'll give you a launch button. And you can start Eclipse by clicking it. When Eclipse is ready, it'll prompt you for a workspace. Um, so what you should do is select um, the workspace that you've just downloaded earlier. Um, so what I'm going to do is browse over to my documents where I saved a workspace. Um, so it's important that you select the workspace folder, um, not anything within it. So if you look inside this folder, there's something called Alex4. If you look inside that, there's something called Source. Don't select any of those things. It's very important that you select the Eclipse workspace. Uh, so when you select that folder, you can then launch Eclipse. Um, if you plan on just using Eclipse for this class um, to save you some work later, you can click this to say, I would like to use this as the default. When Eclipse comes up, it will give you a start screen. Um, this is the welcome screen. Uh, you can say you'd always like to see it, um, or you can simply click it away. So you can see here Eclipse has uh, tabs inside of this workspace. So the Eclipse user interface is um, perhaps overwhelming at first. Um, what I'm going to do is to get rid of some things. I'm going to close um, some things that we won't be needing, which are the task list and the outline just to simplify the user interface a little bit. And what I'm going to do here is uh, create a Java project. So the project is going to be called ALGS4. Um, and note that when I select ALGS4, I'm selecting code that's already there. So um, some of the, the, the uh, options here have become populated. Make sure that when you're looking here, you have the JDK that you expect, um, the one that you installed. This is the Java development kit that you installed uh, earlier. And um, you can just take um, the defaults here. So, uh, and this should work. If, if this is not working for you, it means that you're not in the correct workspace and you should exit Eclipse, uh, restart it and get to the right workspace. Um, I'll show you how to change workspace in a second if, if you need to do that. 
Um, so you can see here, the wizard will automatically configure the JRE in the project layout based on the existing source. So I'm going to finish here. If um, you got in the wrong workspace and you need to change that, you can do that by going to the File menu and switching workspace. So if you just select Other, then Eclipse will prompt you to select um, a workspace. So if you started off in the wrong place, you can use this to find uh, where you need to be. Eventually, Eclipse will prompt you to ask you whether or not you want to create a module info um, .java file. And uh, we're not going to do this, so we're not going to be using Java modules for this class. So it's important that you select Don't Create at this point. So do not create the uh, modules file. And once the wizard is open or done, you will um, have an algs4 folder. And it should look like this, where you have within algs4, you're going to have a source um, and some other things. Within source, you should have algs11, algs12, algs13, etc. These correspond to sections of the first chapter of the textbook. Um, algs21, algs22, etc. correspond to sections of the second chapter of the textbook. Um, you'll note that as Java starts to compile the files here, it's uh, finding some warnings. So warnings are bad, and we want to always have our code um, so that it does not contain any warnings or errors. So this little um, warning sign here, this is a triangle with a warning on it, is telling us that something is amiss. Um, so what I want to do is get rid of these warnings. So I'm going to do that by going to um, the um, Preferences menu, which on Windows is under Window, Preferences. And I'm going to change two options. Okay, so these are written out as well. So under Java, Compiler, Errors and Warnings. I'm going to select two things under um, unnecessary code. So a local variable that is not used, we'll change that from warning to ignore. And um, similarly, an unused private member, member, we'll change that from warning to ignore. So now I can apply these changes um, and it will do a full rebuild um, and the warning signs should go away. And you can see here at the bottom we're rebuilding our workspace. <clears throat> So for your first homework assignment, you're going to be working in the algs11 directory. I'll be lecturing, uh, discussing uh, this hello program, and I can just briefly demonstrate this for you. So when we uh, pull up the editor here, you can see that I have a file. I um, can edit the file, and I can run uh, the corresponding program. So note that I have zero problems right now. Um, by editing your, your file, you may introduce problems. So for example, here I have uh, removed a character. And this has caused uh, what we call this as red ink. This is a problem. Um, and it says, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. So Eclipse will often offer uh, fixes. The fixes that it has um, are limited to its imagination, which is not fantastic. Um, so often they're not appropriate. In this case, um, none of the quick fixes are um, correct. What I, what I simply need to do here is to put a letter in, the letter that I removed, um, and now the program is working again. And you can see here that um, I have no longer any red ink. So what you want to do here is save the file and then run it. Um, so you can do this. Um, I'm going to show you something that I use all the time, which is to simply run the file. Um, Eclipse will prompt me if I want to save this file. 
um, and I want to say, I'm just going to click this box which says always save resources before launching so that I never have to say yes again. It won't prompt me. It will always save everything. And so um, what's happened here is you can see a new window has popped up on the bottom. This is called the console. And what I've done is I've actually written hello on that console. All right. So the basic stages here um, for running programs in Eclipse is you can edit the program. Let's say I want to say hello world. And then you run the program by pressing this um, play button. So this is how you play or run the program. And note that it says hello world. Okay, that's it for this. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.